Good morning. Welcome back. Um, we are reading King of the Dollhouse. This should be chapter six and seven because they're short chapters again. And then tomorrow we should be able to finish up the book and start a new one. Um, if you're new to my channel, I like to read children's stories. Um, I'll be reading a, whatever hits my fancy, I guess, and hope you'll join and listen along. Um, if you want to shout out, leave a comment, and I'll be happy to say good morning. Like I say hello to my friend Claire, Marin, and Stormy. And Marnie and Maggie and Haley and Callie and Bridget, good morning. So if you're listening and want a hello, drop your name and I'll say hello to you too. We're reading King of the Dollhouse by Patricia Clapp. It's a childhood favorite of mine from way back in 1974. So here we go. When morning came, the remaining 10 peanut butter babies did not seem to notice that one of their number was missing. They played happily, ate their peanut butter neatly with their little spoon, and took their baths and their naps and seemed in an excellent spirits. King Bor Bora sang a lot to himself, bustled about the dollhouse tidying things and sweeping in corners with the kitchen broom. Only once did he sit down to catch his breath and read the newspaper. Ellie made a fruit bowl out of a plastic bottle cap, filled it with six or seven raisins, and set it in the dining room table. She added a cornflake or two, which King Bor Bor had found he enjoyed nibbling on between meals, and filled the toothpick cap with fresh water to drink. Everyone was busy and content all day long, and that night Ellie went to sleep quite quickly. There's King Bora Bora with his broom. The following morning, there were only nine peanut butter babies. Ellie stared in amazement as they sat in their little row on the edge of the bedroom floor, hanging their fat little legs over the side, and she counted them two and three times to be sure. Nine, that's all there were. Your majesty, Ellie called, and the king came out of the bathroom where he had been cleaning the tub with a bit of a sponge. Your majesty, one of your children is missing. Missing, are you sure, said King Bora Bora, and looked at the royal offspring and counted their little heads. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, you meant that one. Which one, said Ellie. That, the one that isn't here, said the king. I expect that's the one I mean. Where is it? Um, the queen took him with her last night, said King Bora Bora. Why, was it cutting teeth too? Not to the, my knowledge, it seemed quite happy. But I don't understand, said Ellie. No reason why you should, said the king rather ruby, and Ellie felt. The morning after that, there were only eight peanut butter babies, and the morning after that, only seven. Is the king taking them one away each night? That is the correct, said the king. But where is she taking them? Why shouldn't she let them, she wouldn't let them shoot the rapids? Certainly not, said the king briskly. In any of it, the queen has found she prefers mouseback riding. But the babies, what are they doing while she's out riding? I expect they're learning to ride too. Suddenly, Ellie had a dreadful feeling that she was going to cry. There were big sobs filling up her chest, and she spoke the words came out all shaky. Oh, oh dear, she said softly. You're all leaving me, aren't you? The little king looked at her. Sympathy came into his eyes. In spite of the fact that he was only six inches tall, he seemed to Ellie kind and understandably and fatherly. Don't be sad, Ellie, he said. We could not have stayed here forever, you know. I don't see why not, said Ellie with a big sob that made her hiccup. King Bora Bora sat down on the dollhouse bed and gazed at her. We were becoming far too dependent on you, Ellie. What would we have done when school started again and you were not here? Who would have brought the children's bath water and peanut butter every day? Who would have warned us when your father and mother were about to come into the room so we could hide in the closet? We would have thought of something, Ellie said. No, my dear, said the king. The little voice was very gentle. It is much better this way. But we have had a delightful summer vacation, but all good things must come to an end. And he looked up at Ellie and saw two big tears brimming in her eyes. Good gracious, girl, he said. Don't cry. You'll drown us all. Ellie gave a hiccupy laugh, wiped the tears away, and went downstairs for a fresh bit of cookie. But she still felt like crying. Each morning, there was one less peanut butter baby until only two remained. Ellie spent most of the day sitting on the fuzzy rug watching them, knowing that probably in two more days, at most, they would all be gone. She didn't even want to leave them long enough to eat her meals, and she hurried through her supper so quickly that her summer evening was still light when she went back up to her room. Look, there's a little peanut butter baby sitting under her toadstool. Long rays of the late sun shone through her windows and into the dollhouse, making it look softly bright and homelike. King Bora Bora was sitting in the blue velvet wing chair reading the newspaper, and the two remaining peanut butter babies cuddled close to each other in one of the beds. Ellie knelt down beside the dollhouse. You'll be leaving in a day or so, I guess, won't you, your majesty? 
King Borobar peered through the side of the wing chair and then put down the paper. Sooner than that, my dear, he said, getting up, and he came to the edge of the living room and sat down, cross-legged on the floor to talk to her. We are leaving tonight. Tonight? Ellie almost burst into tears but took a deep breath, scrunched her eyes to take keep the tears back. Yes, the queen will be here shortly. She is bringing an extra mouse for me, and each of us will carry one of the babies. But where will you go? The queen assures me she's found excellent quarters for us all. Is this somebody else's dollhouse? No, we will be quite independent this time. There's a large tree with a delightfully spacious hollow in the bottom of it. A family of squirrels has been living there. Very tidy housekeepers, my wife tells me, and they have graciously agreed to move out and allow us to live in the place. But who will find the children peanut butter, said Ellie. Don't you understand, Ellie? Now that the babies have started cutting teeth, they can eat other things, things that we can find for them. And in this new place, they will be able to play outdoors, and a whole terrain is perfect for mouseback riding. It really is ideal from every point of view. <sighs> Except mine, said Ellie. My dear child, said King Borobora, friends come and go, you know, and in this changing age, people must move about a good deal. The thing you must remember is that they are just as likely to move back again. You mean you might all one day come and live in my Dow house again someday? Ellie's face brightened a little. It is conceivable, the king said. You know, of the queen's changing enthusiasms, it's wholly possible that this time next year she will be toothpick skiing or taking ballet lessons or writing her memoirs. And with the king, one is never queen, and one is never quite sure. But if she does, Ellie asked a little breathless, if she does, it might be very convenient for me to stay here for a bit with the babies. I must say we have never had better service anywhere. Thank you, said Ellie. You're so kind. From the far corner of the room, a little dim, now in the fading light, came the familiar sound of scurrying paws and a tiny shout of, View! Hello! The king got to his feet quickly. Here she is now, he said. Come, here comes the queen. And he lifted a corner of his red velvet robe and waved it aloft. Hello, my dear, he called. We're ready, we're ready. The queen, riding up one mouse and leading a second, galloping up to the dollhouse door and swung herself down with a pretty flourish of blue skirts. Immediately she came from behind nine smaller mice with the peanut butter babies wriggling tightly to each of them and giggling loudly. Look at the children, my love, said the queen proudly. They have been practicing every day and they are superb mousemen, every single one of them. If I could only do as well, said the little king, and Ellie saw that thought she saw a hint of trepidation in his eyes. You're sure the beast you brought for me is gentle? Quite, my sweet, and I shall be beside you all the way. The queen opened the front door and entered the hall where the king met her, embraced her warmly. Then together they went up the stairs to the room where the last two peanut butter babies slept peacefully. For a moment they talked quietly together and then the queen came to the front of the bedroom and spoke to Ellie. I wonder if you might ask one last great favor of you. Anything, said Ellie, anything for you, your highness. The outside air is just a little chill. With these babies so warmly asleep, do you think we might borrow blankets to wrap them in? We will return them. Of course, said Ellie. Help yourself, and please, please keep them. I should like that you would keep them. Your generosity is appreciated, said the queen. Believe me, we will not forget it, nor will we ever forget your hospitality to my husband and the children during these past weeks. If we could only reward you in some way. You can, Ellie said. Just come back sometime and live in the dollhouse again. Any time at all. The king came to stand beside his wife. Thank you, he said. We may well take advantage of your generous offer, my dear. We had best be off. Yes, my love, said the queen, at once. They each lifted a sleeping baby, wrapped it snugly in the dollhouse blanket, and carried it down the stairs, out the front door, and the king closed the door carefully behind them. Ellie watched as King Barbaro mounted first, the queen holding both babies until they were securely settled, and then handling one of them back to him. Quite easily, she jumped into her own saddle and turned, giving the signal to her children. Look at all of them. There they all are. Goodness. Here we go, darling, she called. Do hold on tightly, just follow Mama. And with a dramatic little wave of her arm, she led the nine peanut butter babies falling in behind her and the king bringing up the rear. They sped across the floor. Once the little king looked back at Ellie with a courageous smile. Ellie knew he would have waved except that he was holding on so tightly. His red velvet robe floated out behind him as he disappeared into the summer shadows. One morning, several days later, Ellie woke and looked over the edge of her bed and from force of habit into the dollhouse hall. Folded neatly on the floor was one tiny bit of paper held down by a gleaming small object. Quickly, Ellie picked them up and carefully seemed to be a ring. She tried to carefully, tried it carefully on her finger where it fit perfectly. When she opened the little paper, it was a note written in the smallest, most elegant handwriting imaginable and with great many squiggles and flourishes. 
My dear Elliot said, this is just to let you know we were comfortably established in our new home. The royal babies are healthy and happy and the queen asked me to commend you on the great improvement in their manners. There is a large body of water on our new estate that you might call a puddle and her royal highness has decided to take up scuba diving. Therefore, she finds her crown somewhat of a nuisance and thought perhaps she might like it as a memento. If the scuba diving comes serious, the children and I may well visit you again, he sighed. With your royal thanks, Bora Bora Rex. Yeah. Ellie's mother noticed the ring at breakfast. That's a pretty little thing, she said. Where did that come from? A box of Cracker Jacks? No, said Ellie. I just found it. It looks rather like a fairy crown, doesn't it? Her mother said. It's so delicate. It is a fairy, a lot like a fairy queen, queen, crown, Ellie smiled to herself. I've been thinking, Ellie's mother said. I think I will write a story about little people who live in a dollhouse. It would just be make-believe, of course. Of course, said Ellie. Make-believe. And she spread herself a thick slice of peanut butter bread. I could help you write a story like that, she offered. I can tell you how it might be. It would all start in the middle of the night with a tiny boy saying drat. And there's the crown. I guess we came to the end. I didn't realize that this was the end. And I forgot to show you the picture of their little house and the little squirrel house that they bought. So that is the end of King of the Dollhouse. I hope you enjoyed the story. And tomorrow, I think what I want to read is one of my other childhood favorites called Never Talk to Strangers. Thank you for joining me and have a great day.